Well, it's week 35 of the golfing calendar. And today it's a beautiful day where we are, so we're outside looking over the course, enjoying a bit of sunshine. But no time for more weather chat. There's too much golf to talk about this week. So now, looking sharp and ready for spring, here's Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. This is Talk Birdie to me. Well, Nick, I'm glad you've brought that bottle of wine because there's something I want to do today. Go on, open her up. Yeah. Magnificent. What did you bring? Uh, bought a... Oh, listen to that sound. That sounds Doesn't great. Doesn't that sound yeah. good? Bottle of Shadowfax Pinot Noir from yeah. my good buddy, as you know him, Lee Trevino's store. Yes, good uh, Ray Mack. Ray Mack. Ray he Mac, he yep. has uh, the gum tree stores throughout Melbourne and uh, thought I'd pop in and grab a bottle uh, for the show. Because it is a special occasion, isn't it? It is a special occasion because uh, one of our very good friends, uh, a member of the PGA for as long as I can remember, uh, Glenn Joyner passed away. He had a long battle with bowel cancer. One week short of his 60th birthday. So let's just toast joins, everybody. Cheers, joins. Dan, go over here, mate. Cheers, Cheers. joins. Cheers. Hopefully he's in a nice spot, swinging yeah. on well and holding lots of putts. Absolutely. Yeah, a wonderful human being and an amazing golfer too. Oh, wow, that's nice. I'm not a red person, but that's nice. Well, wow. Shadowfax Pinot. They, have, they make a few different ones. This one's from Geelong, and um, this is one of my favourites. I love it. It's actually very good. Mm. It is good. So, what, what, the Shadowfax you brought last time was a white, which I Yeah, I, that I was like. a Chardonnay. Was, I like that one a yeah. lot. But they do a good range, I'll say that. If I'm drinking red, I'm drinking this sort of red. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's get on with the program. Uh, but before we do, I'd like to welcome aboard Ping as. Mm. A uh, major sponsor of Talk Birdie to me. So thank you, Nick, for organising. You've been a long-time ping player. And it's great to have them on board, especially when you've got a fellow like Victor Hovland just carving it up in the FedEx Cup. It certainly is. What a notable uh, win. Well, notable time to have oh. ping on board, isn't it? A couple of wins. We had Victor there and also yeah. on the Corn Ferry Tour of Chan Kim. He went back-to-back yeah. back as well. But we have great ping players all over the world. And, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be associated with them. And it's so good to have them on the on the program hey, now. tell me this. With your win, famously, you go and you get a ping putter in their yes. cabinet. Now, if you, what, in, the, in the vault. So explain to people who might not know this tradition. Okay. It was pretty well known about 20 years ago, mm. but I, I'm not sure didn't know if they were still doing it. So if you win a golf tournament, on, in, I think on any major tour throughout the world, um, if you're using a ping putter, you then get a replica in gold-plated replica. Yeah. And then they also create a gold-plated replica, which goes into the vault room. And interestingly, uh, I think I've got a few in there, but they put them, uh, the long putters go up the top shelf, so yeah. I know exactly where mine are. <laughs> and I've actually got a picture from years ago when I visited the Ping factory of yeah. me standing in the vault room. So we'll, I will actually post that on socials. Yeah, I think do it'll be that. Too. It's do a, that. The glare in there is unbelievable. And they've had to extend it because they, Ping guys just keep winning. Must be so. thousands and thousands. Oh. You remember when the answer came out? I mean, there was an avalanche of players using an answer mm. and having their win. Well, everyone basically everyone. copied them after that, right? Yeah, that's I mean, right. that style. And then they had the My Day, they had the A Blade, right. they had the, the Ping Pal. Tom Watson made famous. Yeah. The Zing. The Zing. Yeah. Who made the Zing famous? Uh, I reckon Lee Jansen might have won a couple of US Opens. Did he use the Zing? I reckon he did use the Zing, and I reckon uh, Faxon used the My Day. Yes. Facts. So there are all correct. kinds of different. I know I used an A blade when I was playing half yeah. decent years and years yeah. and years and years ago. They were beautiful putters. They were, they were superb. But what Scotty Cameron, um, you know, you, you got to. Um, I guess you got to say this one thing: that uh, flattery is when mm. you're copying something. That's exactly right. And Victor yeah. Hovland, he was using uh, a Ping PLD DS72. That's where a lot of initials. Where are you getting all this information well, from? I actually, I actually tried one of these PLD Ping putters a while back, and they are beautiful. It's kind of like a half crescent moon. Heel, heel shafted, it's just wonderful. Well, a, did you see the way he putted, by the way? He puts the line on the ball. Yeah. I know we've spoken about that a lot. Yeah. But I've never seen them, that line no. just move off its axis. It's, it's incredible. You're funny you said that because... Uh, uh, you notice a lot, you know, when people put the line down and they hit a poor putt, you, you know instantaneously. You can see the side spin or... you got the wobble. They've opened it up and they've got a big wobble. There were virtually no wobbling. No yeah. wobbling for Victor. Um, the driving was off the charts. But can we just talk about his last round? You know, the difference mm. between first and second was 12 million bucks, basically. 12 million US dollars. What's that? 20 million, 22 million Australian mm. dollars 
the difference between first and second. Yeah. So first was 18 million US, that's second right. was six or six and a six half. Six and a half, yeah. That's right. And uh, just for uh, scale, Jason Day down at 28th made 500,000 US dollars, so around 800,000 yeah, to become a 28th. And by the way, uh, Ten percent of eighteen million. Yes, is Shay Knight. The, I think we might have a new. I think we might have a new leader in the clubhouse for Australian caddy earnings this year. Just he's overtaken Mal Baker now for sure. So he's an Australian caddy caddying for Victor. Yes. I didn't realise that. Yeah, Shay is. He's a great guy. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the, the last round. I mean, he he, he comes out of the box a bit. I'm not going to say Shafali because you'll get on me. Shawfly. <laughs> Shawfly. Shawfly. <laughs> Still stuffed it up. <laughs> Shuffley, he was eight under par after about 12 holes and, and, and three shots back. Mm. But then you've got this Victor Hovland character, bogey free on the last day, and just for good measure, birdie 16, 17 and 18. Yeah, it was a big turning point midway through the back nine where they got to the 14th hole. It's only a three-shot margin. Hovland's just short of the green in two. Uh, Shuffley's on the green, and everyone's been raving about Hovland and his short game and how much it has improved this yeah. year. And what did you say uh, before we started about the scrambling stats? What was that again? Uh, he was number one in scrambling after three rounds. I didn't yeah. see after four rounds, but after three, he was number one. Well, he was, which surprised me. He must have been up there again because he didn't make a bogey. So yeah, he, if he did right. miss a green, he, but on this particular hole, he's hit this chip shot, kind of stubbed it and left it 23 feet short, as it turned out exactly yeah. 23 feet. Now, here we, we could have a two shot swing here, but Shoffley didn't make birdie. Victor rolls it in, three-shot lead still there with, what, four holes to play, and it was pretty much game over. So that putt there determined the whole golf tournament. Now, if you watch Hovland chip, the interesting thing that I noticed about it was he's been working with a guy called Joe Mayo. And for someone who struggles with their chipping, I couldn't believe what he told Victor. He said, you need to be steeper into the ball. You're yeah. too shallow. Now, you very rarely hear that. You hear most people say you're too steep. I love being steep. That's what I do. Yeah. And people don't really like that when they watch me chip. But I can get it shallow if necessary, depending on the line. But Victor, he's actually going really steep into the ball if you watch him chip. So I wouldn't recommend it for most people out there, but for him it works. No, you've got to have hands of gold mm. if you're going to come in steep these days. If, if you're not practicing much or if you've got any kind of heebie-jeebie in the system, uh, putting or chipping, I reckon, uh, coming down steep into the ball's probably not for you you need hands of gold or you need yes. to be practicing a fair bit yeah. uh, and in the old days i think we all came down steep there was none of this using the no. bounce business 20 years ago no, it was leading edge all day but clearly he doesn't have the heebie-jeebies and i just i reckon i've seen him before trying to use the bounce but it just didn't work for him no yeah i reckon it's as simple as that it just it just didn't work for him. So he's doing the right thing, doing what he's doing now for sure. Well, the other thing that helped him this week, you said he led the scrambling stats. On the final, sorry, for the four rounds, I think he was 50 out of 50 from inside five feet. Unbelievable. So y you probably think 30 of those are going to be tap-ins, but 20 yeah. out of 20, you know, probably from that three to, f 50, three to five foot range. That is impressive. And that's where you yeah. help you. Because if you don't hit a good chip, guess what? Just roll a nice putt in and it'll, it all counts the same. Now, I want to ask you this. Because Scheffler started the week with a two-shot buffer. You only get in that position because of the year you've had. Is it enough? Is golf the sort of game? So I think golf's an accumulation sport. I don't think golf is a ready, set, go. Let's see who the winner is. I think golf is a sport a bit like the EPL, where it's over a season. Yep. And if you finish on top of the ladder, you're number one. But the PGA Tour are trying to make it a shotgun start with one week to play. I reckon, you know, when you're talking about $18 million first <laughs> place, you know, you have a bad week in Scheffler's shoes. And, I mean, I don't know what he made. I'm guessing because he finished like at 10th. So I'll guess. I think he's made about $2 million bucks. Okay. That's $16 million short so you don't of like the major this. prize. Mark, I'm just going to say something to you. Go on. He won $26 million this year, yeah. so I think he's doing okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now He's doing okay, but he's been shortchanged $16 million this year. Yeah, you know I, what I mean. I like this coming down to the final event. Yeah. I really do. Because you might... Scheffler would have won this probably a few weeks back if yeah. you're looking at the whole season. So you need a bit of a finale. It, it's the playoffs, yeah. right? And in any sport, 
whether it's um, you know AFL, whether it's the NFL, whatever sport they the the, the NBA, you you have the the knockout system and away you go. And if you lose, you lose. Even if you won mm. won the division, won the title, whatever, that's too bad. You got to win that final match, and that's what it was all about. And I looked at the scores because the other thing to look at is okay who actually shot the lowest round because sometimes the person who shot the lowest round does not win that's right as it turned out hovland and xander both shot 261 19 under par yeah it's incredible but because hovland had a five or a four shot lead over xander well he won the fedex cup so and scheffler he shot one under par for the week, 279. So he was a long way behind. But he started yeah. at 10 under, so he still finished midfield. So who would be your player of the year? You know, you got someone mm. like John Rahm who's won four times in a major. Yep. Um, that, uh, that last day at Augusta was some of the more ruthless golf <laughs> I've ever seen. I mean, he was just... He, the, the back nine, yeah, when anything could go wrong, he just hit the ball in places where nothing could go wrong. It was beautiful to watch. Yeah. Three other wins. Then you got someone like Victor, who's, who's won... Twice. Three times now. And if you count this one, which we all do these days, even though it's a handicap event, yeah, that's to. three times. Uh, who's your player of the year? That is a very good question. Because um, it's, it, it's either out of it's out of Victor and, and John Rahm. I think so. Well, or you've got Scotty Scheffler. I mean, yeah. he has had an incredible year. Oh, he had a great start, didn't he? No, Scotty, he's been playing well the whole way through. Yeah. He, he had 20 weeks in a row. He wasn't outside the top 10 or 11. I reckon incredible. he might have had six wins in the first three months by April. Who's that? Uh, Scotty Scheffler. Uh, Something no, crazy. He only won two or three times this year. Did he? I think he only won twice. All right, we'll check Ram won four times. Had the mo- He got off to a really hot start. I think if you take the first half of the season into account, you've got to go Ram. Right on. Um, but he's sort of faded ever since, and I think he's tired, and he needs a couple of weeks off before the uh, before the Ryder you Cup. You keep talking. So. I'm just going to quickly look how many times Scotty Scheffler won this year. I, I think mm. you both you're both clearly off the mark here. Yeah, uh, really. I mean, the the, the the player of the year's got to be Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty seven at Bedford. I yeah. saw that. Yeah. Eight under seventy seven wow. years old. Did you see the, the tweet? Oh, he yeah. is so humble, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> what was the tweet? What was the tweet? Oh. I didn't see it. Yeah, it's Hang very on. funny. It's let very let me have a look for it. Please get the tweet out. So, Mark, this, this tweet was unbelievable. Yeah, go on. From President Donald J. Trump. <laughs> I am pleased to report, for those that care, and I don't know how many that is, uh, that I just won the Senior Club Championship at Bedminster. Trump National Golf Club. <laughs> shooting a round of 67. Now, some people will think that sounds low, but there is no... Hanky Lanky. I think he meant Hanky Lanky. Yeah. I think he meant Panky, yeah. but he went Hanky Lanky. <laughs> Many people watch, plus I'm surrounded by Secret Service agents. Not much you can do, even if you wanted to, and I don't. For some reason, I'm just a good golfer <laughs> slash athlete. I have won many club <laughs> championships. <laughs> <laughs> I have won many club championships and it is always a great honor. He may be the most humble man I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you Scotty oh, Scheffler's year. So he only had two wins. This year, and it was a little bit of 22-23. Two wins, yeah. Yeah, 22-23. Next year starts in January, according to this. Uh, He had two seconds. He had five thirds. But get this, out of 23 starts, he had 17 top tens. That's a money-making machine. Hey, did you ever play this golf course? I never did. Never got to the Tour Champs. Um, The other thing, one more thing was uh, Scotty. He is the first player since Shotlink came into... um, existence yeah, yeah, on the yeah. PGA Tour yeah. to lead both the strokes gained off the tee and the stro- uh, strokes gained approach to the green. The one thing that killed him this year, as we know, is the putting. He was last in the field this week in putting. So Yeah, okay. It was an inc- one of the best ball striking years of all time other than what Tiger did in 2000. It's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. With that footwork, You've to be <laughs> number one off the tee with yeah. that footwork, uh, shots gained for the entire season – Blows mm. my mind. I mean, that basically every single textbook that has been written on golf for 200 years is almost thrown out the window when you look at his footwork. It is, yeah. So player of the year, getting back to that question. So I'm going to sum up sort of Hovland's. This is his third win. He was runner-up at the PGA. Remember yep. the, the Brooks Kepka? Yep. Third at the Players, seventh at the Masters, and never missed a cut this year. That's a pretty good resume for the year. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Well, so who are you going to go, Ram, Scheffler, or Victor? Uh, I, I still think, I think the Masters carries so much weight it does, in it? golf these days. Yep. Uh, I'd give it all up for that major. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I think Ram with the, with the Masters and three other wins, I think he made pretty. He 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 would be mine. Hmm. But the next big question is, the Ryder Cup. 
which is always in grand final week down here, basically, for in the AFL grand final week. And sometimes it's in the NRL grand final week as well. Yep. Um, but that's that always almost gets lost. It's, it's it's tragic. All golf people love it because it's one of the greatest events you'll ever see biannually every second year, um, and the atmosphere created is I've never seen anything like no, it. It's... I've never seen anything like yep. it in golf. Never. Well, as I've said this before, most nervous I've ever been is at Presidents Cups in that team environment, yeah. and the Ryder Cup almost goes up. Well, it does. It goes up another level. Right. So we've got a bloke. Zach, uh, Zach Johnson, Johnson yeah. he's the captain. It's an interesting season this year because of Liv. And what do you do? So you've got players like Wyndham Clark who's playing. and So the other thing is when, when our pod comes out, yeah, the team will be picked. Yeah, so let's guess. Then. Let's yeah. guess. So we're going to guess. Yeah, we'll, yeah, and we're going to have egg on our faces. Okay. No, so I, and yeah. I don't care. <laughs> It'll be about the same time when the pod yeah. comes out. Because our, will be our team will be much better than Zach Johnson's team. I don't care what he says. Yeah, for sure. We know what we're doing. Well, I can give you the six automatics. So Wyndham Clark's one of them, right? Well, you got Scheffler, Clark, yep. Patrick Cantlay, Harmon, yep. Homer, yes. and Xander. So there's your six automatics. There's your six automatics. So now, you've got to get six other players. And if I was to go down on their points list as to who the next six are automatically, if you look yeah. through seven through 12, it's yeah. Brooks Kepka who yeah. missed out by the squidge. So, so he's done that off two majors, I think. A Masters. Pretty much. Where he came second. <laughs> and, uh, and the PGA, PGA that he won. Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's right. So you've got Brooks, Spieth, Young, Morikawa, Keegan Bradley and Sam Burns. They're the next six in line. But after that, you've also got Ricky Fowler, Denny McCarthy, Justin Thomas and Lucas Glover, who's had the hot hand of late. So so Lucas isn't playing in my team. I, I, Lucas? In, in my okay. team, I, I wipe him. I reckon he's had his couple of weeks of sunshine. Mm-hmm. And I think there will be other players that will play better under the gun. I do like Sam Burns. Yeah. Him and Scheffler combined pretty well last yeah. time. I think at the Whistling Straits. I reckon Sam Burns has got a bit of X factor. I don't. I just love the way he plays. I'm going to say. I know you don't like this guy. It's Keegan Bradley. No, Keegan's not in my team. He's not in your team. He's not in my team because he's been playing well. No, he's not. Okay. You know what? Are you picking Brooks? Yes. Okay. Brooks is playing. Team Harmony. What do you think? I, I think they'll work itself out. I think they'll be okay. okay. They're big boys. They, they'll be okay for six days so, to play together. So, so there was an interesting thing in the press conference before this tour championship started. They said to Scheffler, what do you th- wait, is Brooks in your team? Would you pick yeah. him? And he said, yeah, he didn't it. actually say yes. Okay, He said, well, he would have qualified if he'd have played one more PGA Tour event. So that kind of answers your question. So to me, that actually doesn't... He didn't, <laughs> he didn't say, of course he is. Yeah, He, he hinted at it, but I, I got a feeling... I got a feeling they may leave him out. I don't know. You can't leave him out. You can't leave him out. You can't. You can't leave him out. But you never know. (laughs) Did you say DJ's on that list? No. No, DJ's a long way out. You wouldn't pick him? No. No, he hasn't been playing that great. And again, they haven't been playing much, to be honest, the live players. What about Uh, Gooch? No. No, he's not playing in my my team either. So, okay, here's what I think. Brooks... Spieth, Young Morikawa. There's four. Now yeah. you need two more. Two more. Burns. I okay. So I have a. F- I know you like Burns. Yeah. But I. I'm. I think what they're going to do is they're going to pick Ricky Fowler and Justin Thomas. Ricky Fowler. Yep. Off the back of. Oh no, he's had a pretty good season. He's hasn't had a he? very he, he good has. season. I was thinking. You know, we we really saw him at the U.S. Open playing his his best golf of yeah. the year. Yep. Did he ever win? He might have. Had. Yes. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he won. Yeah, he won. Yeah. I'd have to look up which tournament it was, but he did have a win. He almost he came close to the US Open, I think, uh, the week after. That's I think right. He, he won. That's might right. Might have been the Canadian Open, maybe? No, it wasn't the Canadian no. Open. Because no. didn't the Canadian beat Tommy Fleet, Fleetwood at the yes, Canadian Open? Yes, that's right. Yeah. We'll work it out. <laughs> we'll, so work it. We'll, work it, we'll work it out the more <laughs> we go. As you can see, we're well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter. No, that's okay. Because we're talking about it. Do you reckon, the without, like, I've got nothing in front of me, nor do you on yep. the European team. Oh, I, I have a bit of a list going here. So. Well, so Rahm's in, Victor's in, Rory's in. One, two, three. Yep. You can't, they, they're just locks for probably the next 10 years. I'll, I'll give you the top six who are basically in, because they on. have two different points lists going. They have a European and a world points yep. list. So yep. you've got Rory, Rahm, Hovland, Hatton, Fleetwood. And at this stage, Bob McIntyre, the Scottish guy, he's in. 
Right, is he in? Because I heard them in. talking that maybe he had to do something extra. Well, he just finished tied fourth this week. Oh, he's done, so he's, he's done well. He's done very right, well. Good. So after that, so there's your six, basically. They're pretty much locked. After that, I think these next five guys are locked myself, right. as in captain's pick, because it's Fitzpatrick. Yes. Strucker. Yes. Lowry. Yes. Rose. Yes. And Moronk. Okay. Yes, he's, I think so. Moronk has won at this golf course. That's right, okay. and Sergio's gone. Sergio's out. It's, 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 we'll never so, see him back, so, will we? So you need to find one player from these next five, who are you, or next four, who are you picking? It's either Yannick Paul, who's had a great season, mm. a German player, Victor Perez, right. Rasmus Hoygaard, yes, and I your like him. Texas Tech alumni, Ludwig oh, Aberg, who, who just finished fourth. Again, yes. at the Czech Masters. And the, 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 there was a lot of talk. Luke Donald's been keeping a, a very close eye on Ludwig. Yeah. Um, I, I do think this Hoygaard, one of the twins. Rasmus, yeah. Rasmus, Rasmus. Well, the funny thing is Nikolai has won at this, go- at this course, Marco oh, really? Simona. Yeah, he won three years ago, but uh, I, don't think he'll, I don't think he'll be in there. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to put Aberg just on the bench. He can come down and, and be the, the water boy, maybe, and, and be part of the team somehow and just be in amongst it because he's yep. going to be a, a factor for a long, long time. But I think Rasmus gets in. Okay. I think that's, my, that's, my, that's the European team. I wonder how close we'll get. Ooh. Oh, I don't, I don't, it'll only be two or three. We'd I, get wrong. I okay. I think they're going to pick Ludwig. Do you? Yep. Based on just what he's done? Perfect setup for this golf course. You've got to be long and straight. There's a lot of rough. It's a long golf course, and he is... Again, just going on what yeah. I've heard in the locker room, he is the best driver of the golf ball in the world. That's what I'm hearing, which well, is scary. And he's only very young into his career right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. everyone thinks of Rory, but from a, from a accuracy and length dis, uh, standpoint, everyone's just raving about this young man. He's incredible. Well, I, 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 I know the coach, Greg Sands, at Texas Tech. Okay. And, and I, I've just watched what he writes about uh, Ludwig, mm-hmm. and it's like he's Superman. He, he's, he's never done anything wrong in his life, just <laughs> in his whole life. Mm. Um, hey, just before we, we uh, finish up on the ninth green yep. here. Oh, by the way, Ricky Fowler won the Rocket Mortgage, Mo- Rocket Mortgage Classic, just to tie that up. Is that Shadow Facts getting to you? You're getting tongue tied <laughs> over there. Well, bit more, you know, I was looking at my glass thinking it's going down fast, and then I looked at Dan's and he's empty. He's ready for another glass. So. <laughs> That's very, very good. You're, Actually, you're, I, you're a little slow. You I, want to save it, I want to save it for the 10th tee. Okay. I, I, I've just got. You know, I told you last week I was very excited about getting some new clubs. I, I think I'm even more excited about <laughs> the grips I'm going to bat to you. I'll tell you about them in a tick. Okay. Like the podcast? No. Oh, maybe tell a friend. Drop them a text or share it on your socials. This is Talk Birdie to Me with Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. What's this red wine we're drinking again? Oh, yes. Um, well, the second glass has already started for me. You're a little slow, by the way. Uh, 2021 Shadowfax Pinot Noir from Geelong. Grown at the long... I'm giving it a good plug here. Yeah. Grown at Longest View Vineyard on the Bellarine Peninsula, Geelong. Hand right. harvested Pinot. There you go. If you've never heard of the Shadowfax uh, wine, do yourself a mm. favour. Pop down to Gumtree as well and uh, grab a bottle from there. Say hello to Ray Mack. He's usually wearing a very bright jumper. (laughs) Normally. Hey, I I mentioned my grips. Now, I want to ask you this question as well. When I stopped playing professional golf, that was the last day I ever used uh, cord grips. Okay. Because, you know, your hands get soft when you're not practicing as much. You know, I didn't want any blisters (laughs) or anything like that. So, So from 2003 until last week, I've used Golf Pride Tour Velvet Grips. And the name okay. describes them. Velvety. Velvety. You, know, you can't get blisters. You, Soft. You, beautiful. No more calluses. Gorgeous. I didn't have to worry about a thing. Anyway, they didn't have my grips for the first time at Titleist. So they gave me these choices. Now, you know the ones that are kind of two colours and the top hand mm-hmm. is... Uh, well, in preparation for my irons coming, they've put them on my wedges and my woods, which is very nice of them because I hate it when I've got mixed grips. I don't mind mixed clubs. But you cannot possibly have mixed grips no. when you're playing this great game. It's no good. They've all got to be exactly the same size, and exactly the same grip, put on exactly the same way. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not trying. Do you have yours on straight, by the way? Or like yeah, up, upside down and straight. So upside down? Well, they're round grips. I don't like the golf pride ah, on top. Okay. I like the golf pride on the bottom. See, I like the rib grips. Yeah, and I, well, you've got to have the golf pride on top. <laughs> yeah, well, I like the rib grips too. And then I'm about one to two degrees, I think two to three Open? degrees uh, shut. 
You're shut. Yeah, it's just the way I like it. I've never heard of anyone having grip grips on oh, shut. I'm a weird, flippy, wristed left-hander, so I wow. try to do some strange stuff. You're trying to hold it closed <laughs> at the top, eh? You're trying to be Brooks Kepka before <laughs> Brooks Kepka was grip Brooks Kepka. Yeah. Anyway, um, so the the T150s, the Titleist T150s, they didn't arrive, but I had my new grips on the woods and the wedges, and my God, on Saturday. Golf Pride did a test years and years ago. They went to a driving range and they found people with old grips on their driver bashing them away. And they put them on the the, the, the speed machine. What do you call that? The uh, track you know, man. The track man. Yep. Thank you. They put on the track man and they measured what they were doing. Then they take that driver and put a brand new good grip on it. Mm-hmm. And because the players didn't have to hold the club as tightly, because it didn't feel like it was going to fly away, they were looser. And naturally swung it faster. Faster. Without even trying. Well, I can tell you this. Now that I've got some cord under my glove and the bottom hand is just on this beautiful, tacky, sort of velvety rubber, gives me the same feel. For the first time in a long time, I had felt no need to hold the club tight at all. Well, that's a anyway. wonderful swing thought as well. So, so relaxed thank- grip. Yep. It almost could be a masterclass, but not this week. Not this week. So a big thank you to uh, Jared Toyne, too, from Golf Pride, who gave me those grips for nothing. Skip. I love the fact that you guys, two are pros, but you still learn stuff. You're still picking up new oh. new tips and new things. It's great. Yeah. Absolutely. I was, I was playing uh, on the weekend up at Cathedral yeah. um, with David Evans. We got out and yep. played a few few holes. and You were crushing your mate. No, no, Good no. On you, Nick. no. <laughs> But <laughs> just put him in the next week. <laughs> no, what? it was no. <laughs> what a moment! Jeez, God. It, it, anyway, by the time I kind of knew I'd won, I thought, well, I'll give him a little tip on his swing. I just said, look, slow your back swing down because yeah. you're just so fast. That's and all it. of a sudden, the next shot, it was beautiful <laughs> away it went. So you talk about softness with the grips, but even slowing mm. your back swing down. So simple. if you want to hit the ball further, slow your back swing down. It's counterintuitive to what you might think. Well, it's funny you say that. Because we're going to text this out. I was okay. I was handed an article about the great Carl Lewis, right? the multi gold medal winning American superstar sprinter and long jumper, and he swears to God that he only ever ran at eighty five percent. Wow! He was famous for getting off slow out of the blocks, but in training they worked out if he tried as hard as he could to go as hard as he could for a hundred meters, his times were slower than if he just went at 85% the whole way. And how often is that a fact in golf? Mm. To where the the shots where you hardly try quite often go further than the ones where you're jumping out of your shoes and going full lunatic. Totally. Now, do you ever hit a shot at 100% flat out? Only out of the rough, sometimes with a wedge. That That would be it. That'd be it. That, That would be it. I'm the same. 80% is about right. 80% is the way to go. With new grips. And a slow backswing. <laughs> <laughs> <Love it. laughs> hey, we've got a caller. We've got Damien who wants to have a chat to you guys about uh, about Gabby Ruffles. Damien Ooh. from Tassie. Nice. Gabby played well again, didn't she, on the weekend? Uh, yes. Hello, Damien speaking. Hey, Damo, it's uh, Mark Allen and Nico Hearn from Talk Birdie to Me. How are you? Good. How are you, Mark? Yeah, I'm really well. Damien? Hey, whereabouts do you play, Damo? Uh, Tasmania Golf Club. Oh, what's the hole that goes along the coastline there? It's magnificent. About the fourth or fifth or something? Uh, yeah, it used to be the third, but they've actually just switched the nine, so it's the twelfth now. Oh, yeah, is that nice. working better? Uh, yeah, I, I like it actually. Yeah, it's, it's they've been doing it for about a month. It's pretty good. Well, here's a scary thought, Damien. I've actually never played golf Are in you... Tasmania. Can you believe oh, that? My Everyone God. talks about. You know, this um, Barn Boogle and Long, what is it? King uh, Island. King Island and now Seven Mile Beach coming up. Yeah. Royal and, Hobart. And Five Mile Beach, two five. courses there. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've never never played, unfortunately. Arm End mm. is coming as well. Gosh. There's yeah, plenty. you got to come down, Nick. I do. you got to come down. It's, we'll, um, we'll have a game. You know, Tasmania Tasmania's the best course in the south of the state at the moment, but Seven Mile Beach will overtake it, I think, next year. <laughs> how, how, how about Royal Hobart? How's Royal Hobart looking these days? It's doing me in pretty good nick, but it's not as interesting as, as Tasmania design-wise. I, I can smell a talk birdie to me Tasmanian I, I trek trip <laughs> coming up oh, at some stage. Yes. At some yeah, stage. No. Put on the list of things to do, please, Dan. I think we will. Uh, Damien, you, you wanted to talk about Gabby Ruffles. Yeah, I don't know how closely you were kind of watching the Canadian Open this week, but um, Grant Boone, the, one of the LPGA commentators, tweeted during, uh, during the third round that Gabby called a two-shot penalty on herself in a bunker for touching the sand with her club. Apparently no one, no one saw it. No one was watching. She just called the called the penalty on herself. And then 
she's standing on the 72nd tee today and she's two under and three or four under gets you in the top 10 um, and gets you a start next week in Portland, uh, which would be pretty important for her. Um, yeah, in the in the end, she doubled the last, and, and it didn't matter anyway. But it, it looks it look it was looking on the seventy second tee like that that penalty call that self imposed penalty was going to mm. cost her a start next week. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I did read about that where before she started a fourth round, she actually called a two shot penalty on herself, and as you say, no one saw her; it was just her, so she had to add an extra two shots onto the previous score. And then you're right, um, double bogey. She had actually had two double bogeys, six birdies, a few bogeys, ended up shooting a 73. So finished tied for 19th. But uh, isn't it funny how with golf, it's the only sport where you can call something like that on yourself. Self-governed. Yeah. Self-governed. It's amazing. Hey, Damien, I've got a question because I I haven't seen the incident and you're the the first person who's alerted me to it. Because it's funny these days, they've changed the rules in bunkers to where if you walk in and you've got to get the rake from a long way away, you're allowed to rake your footprints up to the ball so in some ways you are allowed to touch the sand so whereabouts did gabby actually touch the sand was it on her backswing or was it as she addressed the ball it had to be one of them yeah i don't know grant didn't go into detail in the tweet i'm not uh, yeah either i guess when she was addressing the ball or when she started her backswing i guess but um yeah, it's, got, it's a bit more complicated these days when you can actually mess around in the bunker before you hit your shot. <laughs> yeah, there was a famous one in the Women's US Open. Now, the the young lady, she was from, was it Norway or one of those places up there? Um, anyway, she t- made a backswing and the amount of sand that she took with her sand nine, she wouldn't have been able to fa- uh, feel. No yeah. way. A little bit like Patrick mm. Reed in the Bahamas, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even close, Nick. He was digging a grave. He was. Uh, but uh, this lady, oh, God, I should be able to remember her name, but I can't, so I apologise. The only way they picked it up was the telecast zoomed on it. And I'm telling you... It, Five grains of sand were moved. Yeah, I remember that event. I think it was at Cordeval, just uh, south of San Jose. I remember that. I remember that U.S. Open and where it happened. Yeah, yeah that's right. So um, she didn't feel anything, and then fair mm. enough. When you look at the evidence, there's no way she could have felt anything because she only moved five grains of sand. Yeah. So uh, she must have taken. Yeah, you know, to be able one. to feel something like that, mm. it, it, it's amazing what golfers will do, isn't it? it, it it's incredible. Damo, hey, uh, I reckon she's going to be a star, Damien. I reckon next year we're going to be talking about Gabby Ruffles a hell of a lot. Yeah, she's an absolute gun. Yeah, um, I reckon. Her swing, I reckon, is a little bit like Lynn Grant. Like, there's a bit of a lag in the backswing or something going on. It's not quite as extreme as Lynn Grant, but it, there's a bit of a similarity there, I reckon. Yeah. Well, if you swing it like Lynn Grant, you know you're in the right, uh, you're you're in the right space, that's you, for sure. You're but, going all right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining in, mate. Cheers. Appreciate it. No worries, guys. And you can too. Just get in touch with our socials. And if you like, you can actually just record a question if you don't feel like you want to talk to us. If you just want to record a question, um, do that on your iPhone or whatever phone you've got and send it through to on our socials and we'll we'll play it and uh, try to our very best to answer your question. Go to the website, talkbirdieb.com, and there's a little thing there you can click record now. Easy. Uh, nice and easy. Well hey, we've got a new name for an old segment. Okay. It's time for The Ping. Worldwide performances. Ooh, oh. I just made that up on the screen. We can change it <laughs> if you like. Oh, or it can be the ping so global performances. I love very that. formal. Like okay. Wide world of sports or yeah, something. Or something. Yeah, I like that. Okay, uh, this week we, we had some interesting results going on. Uh, first and foremost, we almost had a record for the most playoff holes on, an, on the, and well, ever, but it was on the Asian tour. On the Asian Tour. Asian Tour, they were playing for the first time in Scotland, yeah. at the Fairmont St. Andrews, and yeah. Eugenio Chikara won in a 10-hole playoff from Aussie's Matt Jones. 10 holes. 10 holes. <laughs> the all-time record is 11. Was that Seve and Johnny Miller no, at Sun back, City? Back in 1949, oh, the Motor City Open. I had to yeah, look okay. that one up. There's, yeah. there's a statistic for you. It was the most ever in a uh, Asian Tour event, but... Right uh, he won on the 10th playoff hole. A good week for the Aussies there. Andrew Dote tied third. Wade Ormsby tied eighth. Zach Murray tied for 23rd. So uh, some you, really good golf over there. And good to see Zach playing well as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. For sure. Uh, on the LPGA, who uh, Damien, our caller, just mentioned uh, where Gabby Ruffles was playing. Gee, that's hard calling a penalty on yourself. But you have to do it if you, you, know, it. If you know you've done it for sure. But Megan Kang won in a playoff over Jin Young Ko, who... Actually made a double bogey in the playoff. But for Megan, it's her first win in seven years. Fantastic. Ping player. Another ping player. There you go. Uh, Hannah Green. Good to see her back in form. Tied for fourth. Mm. Really good result for her there. Uh, Gabby was tied 19th and tied 22nd. Minji Lee and Karis Davidson. Another ping player. 
<laughs> well, that's a handful of Australians made the cut. That's fantastic, yeah, isn't it? We're going to see more and more Australian flags on that tour next mm, year. It's going to be brilliant. For sure. On the DP World Tour at the D&D Real Czech Masters, uh, England's Todd Clements had a one-shot win over Matt Wallace in his uh, rookie season, so a great win in that regard. And there was a lot of back and forth on the Ryder Cups, as I mentioned before, with Ludwig yeah. Aberg and Rod McIntyre playing well. So uh, they got one more event, and they're in Switzerland this week at Cron Sissier. Mm. And after that, Luke Donald is going to have his hands full uh, picking the rest of that team. So we'll see how that goes. Champions Tour. Oh, my gosh. Did you see the finish to this Paul Goidos? I, I, I saw Paul Goidos four putt from a <laughs> two-foot. From when, three he a, when, he, when he had a one-shot lead. Yes. I if, saw that on social media. If he makes it, he wins the golf tournament. Oh and he four-putted. It was... Oh. You talk about heebie-jeebies. Oh. Oh. Anyway... He might never recover from that. No. VJ Singh won that one. Gordos had a four-putt triple bogey on the last hole. That was a tough one. But uh, Richard Green, again, good solid week. Tied for 13th. And Mark Hensby and Rod Pampling tied for 16th. Legends Tour Senior PGA Championship at Trump National. Um, the president wasn't playing... <laughs> Wasn't Apparently, it? no. He was shooting course records somewhere else. Lucky, yeah, lucky, lucky for everybody else. <laughs> Peter Baker, six-shot win. That's his Bakes. third win of the uh, third win of the year over Greg Owen. That was fantastic. Now, Corn Ferry Tour, we started the final series. Remember we spoke about this yeah, last yeah. week? We've got four tournaments. First one's at Albert, uh, Albertson's Boise Open. Mm -hmm. You ever played there in, in Idaho? No. It's a good ne track. Never been to really Idaho. Really good. And uh, someone who should have played, but he didn't, unfortunately. This is a tough one. Curtis Luck. He's had a really good season. Thought his tea time was 7.55. Turned Don't you dare. Turned out his tea time was 7.45. Oh, no. So he got to the tea and <sighs> uh, he had been disqualified. Because if you get there within five minutes, then it's just a two-shot penalty. But he got there about six or seven minutes late. Can well, you believe that? I, I don't want you to do it today because I know you've organised. I've, all, mm. I've organised a top five today okay. already. Okay. But we've got to do the most famous disqualifications oh, in yes. the history of golf. <laughs> next week we'll do that. We'll do that next yeah, week. Yeah, that's like a that ripper, one. that one. But the good news is he's got three tournaments left to uh, try and get his PGA Tour card. <laughs> Best of the Aussies, uh, Dimi Papadatos tied for 43rd. And a couple other small ones uh, on the Epson Tour, Hira Naveed and Robin Choi tied 5th. And on the US Senior Women's Open, mm -hmm. our own Sue Worcester, who's a member down at the National, she uh, finished tied for 39th. Good on her. Great result. And we had... Um, we're talking That's Annika huge. Sorenstein's playing, um, you know, Amy Orca, all these uh, legends so of the game are playing. she just went over there and qualified. Yeah, she, she played. Flew over, qualified, top. came 39th. Yeah, exactly. That Trish, is enormous. Chris Johnson won that one. Incredible effort. That is an incredible effort. Certainly is. We should talk to her. Yeah, we, we actually, should. Actually, when she gets back, we should talk to her. We need to, to get her, her on. That, that, what, what made her even go over? You mean, like, I would never even dream about going over trying to qualify for the men's se U.S. Senior Open or anything. Well, she's a legend of the legend. women's amateur yeah, game, okay. for sure. She's won everything. Well, that is a mighty, mighty performance. Dale Clark has messaged in re, uh, the chat about Aussie caddies last week. Yeah. Dale said, hey, guys, you can have Russell Crowe, but Cam's caddy isn't an Aussie. Oh, he's a Kiwi. Oh, he's a Kiwi. Sam, is Sam oh. a, uh, a Kiwi? Thus the Russell oh, Crowe comment. Oh, by the way, I still looked into that, you know, because that was part of my homework. Yeah. I, okay, are we going major tours? Or are we including... Yeah, everything. Well, if we just go PGA Tour and DP World Tour, for instance, yeah. we'd go with those two and, and also the LPGA. I think there's more Aussie caddies than Aussie players. All right. Okay, that was the answer to that question. Well done. If we include every other tool, then it's going yeah, to be the yeah, opposite. There's going to okay. be more Aussie players. So our caddies only go to the good places, basically. <laughs> right, that makes sense. And they're making a lot of money, too. Yeah, yeah. Some of them. Too Caddying much. for Norwegians. Too much cash. Last week, Mark, you were banging on about the video of Fred Astaire, uh, and you said it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. It's lovely. That was I what like you said. Yeah. And, and we put it on socials. It is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. <laughs> it really is. It is good. A couple of comments. Uh, Lee Datsun has said, uh, maybe a masterclass on how to do this from Marco. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I might have a crack one day. Yeah. Oh, that would if fun. I drink any more of this gear, I will. Yeah, you need a couple on. of uh, <laughs> couple of pinos before you These start. These listeners are good. I don't know how he did it. It's it's actually quite incredible. Oh, it's amazing. No, it's brilliant. The yeah. hand eye coordination is yeah. phenomenal. And yeah. obviously a reasonable player as yeah. well. Yeah, he's really good. And, and every stroke was consistent. Every like yeah. at the end, it was amazing. Beautiful. A review on the pod from Timbo eighty three. I listen as soon as it lands. The pod has a great mix of stories from Mark and Nick about touring days as well as current events and topics. 
I love the wrap up of how the Aussie golfers have fared all around the world. That's that uh, ping around the world. Uh, yes, results. ping global performances. Handy tips that are backed up by footage as well. So that'd be your masterclasses. Mm. Mm. No, that's good. Nice it, review. It, Thanks, it, Timbo. It, it almost didn't get here, the performances. I wasn't so sure about it. But it's uh, found us niche. Yeah. yeah you you need to know it, what's it, going it, on. Done well, Nick. Yeah. No, it's good. No, it's really good. Well done. While we're at the driving range last week, Mark, your masterclass was on how to best use a driving range so it helps rather than hinders you on the course. That's right. What's the feedback on that? Lockie has said, or asked, what's the difference between grass and mats for hitting off? Well, if you actually hit the ball clean, almost nothing. But you, you can lose the art of taking a divot and it's very important to take divots or just the right amount of grass if you're not taking divots you've got you've got to take something mm. when the ball's on the ground or it's on the grass on the golf course so and, and if you hit the ball fat or heavy on the mat you're not going to notice it yeah it's just going to club's just going to bounce off and it'll look like a good shot yeah direct b check has said so true i see tons of guys practicing hitting short irons fat unaware and craig price 94 has said or asked you guys, why do I hit around 25 to 30 balls and then after that start to get really pulley? It's interesting. Not normally mm. the only way you pull shots in my, in my view. Um, and, and that's if your body is stopping. And sometimes if your body stops, the club just whooshes past your hands and that's where the pull comes from. And it's funny, you know, a lot of people when they pull shots, they feel like they're coming over the top mm -hmm. until you show them on video and they're not coming over the top at all. In fact, they're so far on the inside and the only way they can square the club up is to stop their body. Mm. And then if they stop their body too much, it just flips completely yeah. over and feels like a big over the top pull. Yeah, I agree. Lower body's stalling. Yep. Nick, uh, get ready to have your tyres pumped up here, buddy. Oh, good. Ashley Washington, yes. no, I don't know if Ashley Washington's a male or a female, I'm not sure, but Ashley Washington commented on the photo of you outside the, the driving range last week. Okay. In fact, ironically, it's a photo of you and Mark outside the driving range. Yeah. And Ashley said, Nick is looking ripped. Wow. Yeah. Was Ashley looking at the right photo? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's because Alana puts him on all these oh, juice diets oh. and stuff. Yes. He's not allowed to work. <laughs> That's but, why. Yeah, I'm on a great juice diet at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> now, it would be feedback if, uh, with a bit of a pump up of you there, Nick, if we didn't have a whack at the same time. Oh, of course. Yeah, this, is your, this is your segment. You love this the whack. Oh, I love them. No, they're great fun. Good. Gino Rubico has said, I don't, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I think so, has said, Nick, you may have had a Barnaby Joyce Matilda's moment on the pod when describing Hovland's 28 when you said he didn't hit it particularly close, <laughs> made 15 to 20 footers. Marco, can you adjudicate, please? What was Nick watching? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think there's a lot of nine footers, Nick. Is there, yeah, there are a lot yeah. of a lot of nine <laughs> footers, the, the extreme that he hit it to. Well, it's funny. I, I was watching the highlights package. I think I might have been watching the front <laughs> nine, not the back nine. <laughs> think about Victor's last, well, 72, 81 holes. Extraordinary mm. golf when there's $18 million up for grabs. Extraordinary stuff. Do you guys know about the Barnaby Joyce moment that he's referred to here? You know what that yeah. is? Yeah, yeah. You know what, Nick? Oh, I remember hearing about it. Go on, but refresh from my memory. Well, he watched a Matilda's match, mm -hmm. uh, but he was watching a replay thinking it was the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, oh, well, there you go. That's what I did. So. Uh, yeah, sort of, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> they were all cheering in the pub because that as well. Oh, it was so <laughs> Cheering goals. That was a replay. <laughs> Last bit of feedback here. Hey, guys, this is from uh, Roscoe at the Piney Valley Golf Club in Mackay in North yeah. we spoke to nice. We spoke to Ross a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ross has said, hey guys, love the pod, entertaining and insightful. A mate and I were discussing bounce on wedges and we need your guidance. Mm -hmm. I have a 52 with 8 and a 60 with 8. He has a 48, 8, 52, 10, 56, 14. And we'd like to know what you guys think is ideal, what you play, or is it just personal preference? Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I might, the, the least amount of bounce I have on my wedges these days is 10. And in fact, on my... Um 55 degree wedge is a 54 yeah. bent to 55. You love the bounce. It's up to 14. Mm. Yeah, I, I love the bounce because I'm yipping them and, yep. and the bounce helps me yep. drop kick them reasonably close. So if you don't practice your chipping much, then I really recommend high bounce. Mm. A, well, lot of, a high bounce. I've got a 54 degree and that has 10 degrees. Yeah. And then I have a 60 and it has 6 degrees. So I've got no bounce on yeah. my 60. But I, as You're coming down steep. I come down steep. I love using my hands and working it. So I, I think for most golfers out there, I would go for more bounce than less for yeah. sure. 10 degrees is a good number. Particularly up in North Queensland where I imagine the golf course is reasonably soft mm. and you know, some lush grass You've got that well. grain to deal with as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, you could yeah. always go the toe-down chip as well. Remember that with, yeah, the, with yeah, the grain? That's right. Yeah, toe-down <laughs> chips work with uh, any yes. kind of bounce really. So if you look at last week's masterclass, mm. um, you'll get a help along. But I would go 
as much bounce as you could possibly get if you're in North Queensland and you're not practicing your chipping too much. Yep. That's the feedback. Well done. Hey, it's time for the top five. So this week on the back of Victor Hovland and the one question mark that so many people, commentators have said, and, and rightly so too, by the way, was he had a weakness with his short game. So I thought this week I would look at the top five with an Australian lean, mm-hmm. the top five players in the history of the game with a perceived weakness in their short game. So at number five, a former Order of Merit winner here in Australia. The last time I saw him chip, uh, he actually put the divot on top of the ball. <laughs> the ball didn't move, but the divot was on top of the ball. Wow. Ridiculous. Mm. The same round I saw him putt around the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> right? This bloke won an order of merit here in Australia. So his perceived weakness in his short game wasn't perceived at all. He had a weakness. And his name is Ozzy Moore, and he's one oh. of the greatest blokes you'd ever meet as well. Yeah. I love him. Absolutely. He's, a fan. He's been a great commentator yeah. for a long time as well. So, so I, this, this uh, top five, they're all going to be absolute flushes. Yes, you have to be if you haven't got a short game. Yes, I'm looking at it now. They are full-on flushes. You're exactly right. Yeah. Number four, Victor Hovland. Oh, I yeah. mean, they've been talking about his short game for a long, long time. Who was the fellow who's been helping him out? Uh, Joe him? Mayo, yeah, that's I believe. Yep. He's been helping him out. I think he looked at it too with his stats guy. Yes. And it, they said, listen, you're missing short side all the time. Correct. You know who's going to make it twice is? as hard. Who's you know, his stats guy? Eduardo Molinari, Francesco's oh, yeah. brother. He's helping a lot of players out on the European tour. With their stats. With their stats. He has this. He, Matt Fitzpatrick is one of them, and uh, he's really making his mark in the statistical world. Yeah, okay. Mm. That's very... Brad, uh, the, but, the, so you're spot on there with what you said about Victor realised he's going at too many pins. He needs to yeah. aim away from the pins. And you know who I told that to the other day? Who? It was Lee Trevino, our buddy, Ray Mack. Yeah. He went out and he had 40 points. I said, don't aim for any pins, That's Ray. It. That's it. And guess what? He has 40 points and wins the comp. You're not good enough to aim at pins, Ray. No. Stop it. Most, <laughs> most people aren't. Um, it, it's, it's funny you say that because the, the one story that I always remember reading about, uh, remember Brand Schnedeker. All right. So Brand Schnedeker, he's the first person I saw where he spoke to his stats guy and the stats guy looked at him and said, hey, listen, you're putting from 20 feet. You're the best 20-foot putter on tour. Why are you, sh- why are you aiming at flags? Yeah. Don't hit it so close. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't even bother aiming at flags. Just go at the center of the green and because you are the best 20-foot putter on the world, in the world, you'll be right. And he went on a winning streak My goodness. because he listened to his stats guy. Anyway, uh, that's Victor Hovland at number four. Number three. This bloke won twice on the US tour. Had a golf swing where you could literally put a glass of milk on his head and he wouldn't spill a drop. He won at uh, uh, Pebble Beach. Oh, okay. And it, for a little while, he started chipping left-handed. Yep. And he started, then when the chipping left-handed didn't work, he actually tried a long chipper. Extension <laughs> the chipper. The extension chipper. chipper. No, he didn't use it like a broomstick. He actually had it going up <laughs> the arm and uh, against the side, but they banned it. His name is Brett Ogle. Yeah. And uh, what a flusher um, he was. G'day, um, incredible. G'day, Brett, if you listen. I actually... He listens every week. At, uh, I think it might have been at the Australian Open when it was a Victoria 20-something years ago. Mm. Uh, I think I might have given him a chipping lesson left-handed, or he was asking yeah. me about my chipping left-handed because he was chipping left, and I yeah. said, "What are you doing?" But it was it was fascinating. Great guy. Great can, guy. Can I tell you, I got to play with him when he was an amateur. He came to play in the Australian Masters when he was an amateur, and uh, we got to the back nine, and um, I, I, I was only a kid. I was only about sixteen. I said, "I've heard you're the best uh, driver off the deck exponent ever." You know, I was really embarrassed and shy. You know, <laughs> and the, what he the, what the, the what he did on the front night, I just couldn't believe. Hang, I mean, hang he's, on, he's hitting it unbelievably. Dan, did you just hear what Mark said? Embarrassed and shy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was. I'm in shock over that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm asking him now. This down the eleventh. We've just walked onto the fairway. He got a ball out, and he's using a wooden club, mind you. Uh, and he dropped the ball into a divot, and he hit a driver out of the deck. No, out of the divot. Oh. And it went, it went like it was teed up two inches. Oh, it wow. was just incredible. He had that rising ball flight. Yep. Uh, at number two, this bloke, he won a Scottish Open playing the last seven holes, or last five holes, seven under. Ah, mm-hmm. Eagle, birdie, 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 eagle. Uh, one of the great stalwarts of Australian golf. Uh, I think he was the chairman here. And his caddy, Shags, would scream at him if he thought he was going to hit a shot 
60 yards short of the pin. <laughs> he just couldn't hit a 60 yard <laughs> shot in his life. His name is Peter O'Malley. Yeah. Uh, never took a divot in his life, I don't reckon. No, just uh, just picked it off. <coughs> maybe, 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 maybe hit off mats all his life. I don't know. All right. And the number <laughs> one, the number one player, and this is number one for a few reasons because he's one of the greats. In fact, he probably is the great. Jack Nicholas mm. uh, had a very perceived weakness with his wedges and his bunkers. And I've got this Lee Trevino quote. So he said, it's funny how God doesn't give everybody everything. And from Jack, he held back the wedge. Jack was not a good bunker player. He could play wedges from the fairway okay, but around the greens he didn't have much finesse. Years later I asked Jack why he wasn't a good wedge player and he said, I don't need to be. I hit the ball in the fairway and then I hit it on the green. <laughs> <laughs> How he's, good is that? He was one That's, of the greatest ever putters. He, he, uh, yeah, no, one of the best putters and ball striking tee to green was amazing. There was a young guy in the States before I came back to live here in Australia, Austin Trusler, I might have spoken yeah. to you about him before, yeah. who chips the ball one-handed. Yeah. You know this guy? Have you yeah, seen him? Yeah, Played? you showed me. Yeah. He qualified for the US Open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, people, I think his parents and some other people, you know, saying, try and get him to chip two-handed. But after a while, after helping Austin, we've gone, you actually don't need to chip two-handed. Yeah. All you need to do is be able to chip average or good. You don't need to be great because from tee to green, he is one of the most a you know, impressive ball strikers you'll see. So sometimes you don't need to be great at everything. Just yeah. be reasonable at some things and great at others. After the, what we saw at the weekend, is Paul Gordes an honourable number six? Ah, no, no, he goes into the heebie-jeebie files. Right. I've and, got and another one. stacks of them. <laughs> yes. I've got another one for chipping. Yeah, yeah. And that would be Tim Clark, the South African. Yes, that's a good one. Yep. yep. Anytime he was off the green, he got the putter out or the hybrid. He didn't like chipping over bunkers or hitting little chip shots, but it had a lot to do with his uh, his makeup, his physiology, where his arms, which the they elbows... They found a funny way, didn't Really they? weird, yeah, and he couldn't hit chip shots for some reason. So, uh, And then when they banned the long putter, that's when he really struggled, So, as in the way you yeah. use the long putter. Craig Spence used to play a lot of practice rounds with him. They got mm. along really, really well. Okay. And what a player. He, man, he was an amazing player there for a while. I played uh, with him in President's Cups, and we... Uh, Kicked uh, Fred guys. Funks and David Toms's butt. Sorry, oh, guys, nice. but uh, Tim, Tim and I won. Yeah, it was great yeah, fun. That's very good. That <laughs> is was that, very good. Who was that quote from? Was that Trevino? Uh, Lee Trevino said that about Jack Nicholas. So yeah. I guess something I'd like you guys to think about for next week. Mm -hmm. Lee Trevino said, uh, God doesn't give you everything. Yeah. What I'd like to know next week on the show, not now, not yeah. now, yeah. is what was the weakest part of your own games? Jeez, Not there's now. There's a lot to choose what from. You feel the weakest part of your game. <laughs> oh, that's that pretty easy. <laughs> we'll hold it for next week. We'll do it next week. We'll do it next week. And if you got if you got a bit of fun, uh, if you think there's a professional out there you want to pick on and you, there's a weakness in his game or her game, let us know. Get yep. in touch with our socials. We can <laughs> we can have a little bit of fun next week. Time for the masterclass. All right, this leaks. <laughs> <laughs> I think the wine's gone to my head. Leave it in. Leave, leave, <laughs> empty glass. Please, empty please, glass. Empty, please leave oh, this in. Oh, dear. Don't cut it out. Yeah, luckily, I'm walking home. <laughs> <laughs> this week's masterclass. There you go. I got yeah, it well out. Uh, Victor Hovland. Okay, so if you watch him play in this tour championship, and if you watch him in general, he... Hits a little fade off the tee. A beautiful tee shot. Never Just seen to, him hit it right to left. Never seen him hit a draw with a driver. Never. So, a lot of people, they want to try and hit the draw. Don't worry about it. Just play the fade. And what this week's masterclass is on is where to tee the ball up between the markers. If you're a fader of the ball and you're a right-handed golfer, go to the right-hand side of the tee. That is exactly where you want to tee it up. If you watched him playing with Xander Shoffley, Shoffley draws the ball mostly off the tee. He was on the left side. That's right. Victor was on the right. Yeah. Don't do anything silly where if you're a fader of the ball going over to the left-hand side, okay? You don't <laughs> need to do that for most golfers out there. Now, if you can work the ball both ways, then what yeah. you can do, what I call use the tee to your advantage. You can actually tee the ball up in different areas on the tee because you get a good seven or eight yards, depending on how wide tee boxes are, to actually uh, improve the way that the hole or the shot looks to you. But if you're a fader of the ball, like probably, what, 70%, 80% of golfers yeah. out there? 90 tee the ball up on the right hand side use the tee to your advantage and I'll post something up on socials about different things and different aspects on that regard. See look Dan Dan's laughing. At he's learning right here he's, no. he's laughing at it big, but I'm telling you Dan <laughs> why are you it, laughing it Ben? It changes the hole significantly when you tee it up on the right uh, versus teeing it up on the left I'm not laughing at the masterclass what I'm laughing at is the fact that uh, Nick just mentioned Xander Shoffley I'm laughing at the fact that every time I hear Nick pronounce Xander Shoffley <laughs> he nails it and every time I hear you pronounce it you've got about 18 different 
pronunciations of Shoffley. Yeah. Shoffley. Yeah. Well, Shoffley, he plays very well uh, <laughs> at the FedEx Cup, All but right. not good enough this week. Time for another glass. Great fun. Uh, a big thanks to Shadowfax uh, for supplying. Although you supplied, didn't you? I supplied it. <laughs> you supplied this week. And a big thank you to Ping. Uh, welcome aboard, Ping. It's great to have you. Yep. Oh, there it is. That's Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen's podcast, Talk Birdie to Me. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and you'll never miss an episode. And if you can share with a friend, well, that'll be awesome too. Talk Birdie to Me's executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. Sound design, Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com.